I was in my car one day listening to the national public radio, and there was a story about the impact of the opioid crisis um, on the foster care system. And that because of the rising number of adults uh, who were struggling with addiction to this um, powerful substance, that it was it was putting more kids into that system. So I reached out to shout out Lindsay Bale, who works uh, with the Jefferson County Public School Department, uh, specifically in the Office of Foster Care. And we had a lot of meetings and conversations about what she was seeing and what she had been observing in her work and what she was seeing in young people. I was mainly interested in, you know, as a dramatist, I'm interested in, you know, the psychological impact, right? And, and, and how this affects um, people, you know, you know, people in crisis and, and struggling with, you know, ex existential questions, ethical questions, you know, dealing with the impact of forces outside of their control. And so based on what she told me, I immediately thought, well, I should write a play about this and I should challenge myself as a writer to write a play for as young an audience as humanly possible. That was my challenge. And it was because she told me that, that what was happening a lot of times is the kids were, were thinking it was their fault. And that just really hit me hard. And so um, for some bizarre reason, Jack and the Beanstalk it was a framework for this. And here's why. It's because Jack and the Beanstalk is one of my least favorite fairy tales because it always felt unfinished to me. And so a lot of these old school stories are, are, are oral. They're told, they're passed down, they're remixed constantly. And I have this theory that Somewhere along the way, the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, someone got lazy and just left out the ending because it's about this kid, him and his mom are poor. He gets some magic beans, he throws them in the ground, he goes up, he steals a bunch of stuff, a bunch of magical objects. And then he comes down and the giant comes after him and they chop the, the thing down and the giant dies. And they just live happily ever after with these magical objects, right? So, um, but to me, it was something about a young person um, trying to elicit change because of their circumstance and grabbing things that they didn't necessarily understand. And, and so I was convinced that I, it just, to me, that just seemed like a good framework because I also wanted to extend the story of, of Jack and the Beanstalk and give it an actual, what I felt like was an actual proper ending. So somewhere in the crock pot of my brain, this story jacked happened. 